Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to the easy peasy guide for the Seat of Sacrifice Extreme. First up, we place our markers like this, but I think most groups will adopt the usual cardinal and anti-cardinal marker spots. You'll want your party to choose clock positions with the DPS on the corners and tanks and healers on the cardinals. You'll also want to choose your left and right groups, consisting of a tank, a healer, and two DPS. You'll also need a partner. For us, we just had the DPS rotate clockwise to their tank or healer partner. Your clock positions and partner will become more important later in the fight. First up is Terror Unleashed, which reduces everyone's HP to 1 and applies a Doom debuff that must be cleansed by healing the party back up to 100%. Next, the boss will power up and you'll see a limit break gauge above his head. Throughout the fight, he'll power up this gauge to either an LB1, an LB2, or an LB3. Each limit break number corresponds to a different mechanic. We'll get into each of those mechanics a little later, but for now, he'll always cast an LB3 for this first one. Remember this for now. Next, he'll cast Solemn Confidor. This will put an AoE underneath every party member. We just stack on the butt, dodge the AoEs, and immediately move to our clock positions. He'll then cast Absolute Stone 3, which is basically Earthshakers, and everyone will get hit with a Conal AoE coming from the center of the boss. Right after that, we have our DPS rotate clockwise to their tank or healer partner, and then go to the edges of the arena. In our case, we decided to use the cardinal edges just because that's what we chose, but you can also stack in the corners as well. Just coordinate with your group to see what works best. Looking at his head, we can see that it's a limit break 3. This means that each DPS will get a large AoE meteor on top of them, hence why we spread out to the edges with our partners. These AoEs are massive, so standing even just slightly into the middle of the stage, you're going to get hit with two AoEs and die. The boss will then jump back to the middle and start casting Imbued Saber. This will put an element on his sword, and different elements have different mechanics that come with it. One thing to note here is that you have to look at the magic animation in order to see what element applies to his sword. This first one will always be Earth, followed by either a fire or an ice. In the case for this run, it's fire. He'll then cast Imbued Coruscants to resolve both the Earth and fire mechanics. Earth is Earth Shakers, so you have to stand in your clock positions, while fire puts a fire debuff on you, and if you move or use your abilities, you'll take damage. So for fire, you'll want to stop moving as the debuff will come off in about two seconds. One thing to also note is that ice can also appear here instead of fire. We'll go over what to do with ice in a bit, but just note whichever fire or ice element you get here, you'll always get the opposite element when we repeat this mechanic a little later in the fight. In addition to the elements, you'll either have to stay under the boss or get away from the boss depending on his sword animation. If you see these rings on his blade, that means you have to be inside his hitbox once everything resolves. If you don't see those rings, that means you'll have to get away from the boss. Something that helps me out with this mechanic is that if I see those circles on his blade, I think to myself, I need to stand inside the circle or inside the circle hitbox underneath the boss. Next, he'll cast to the limit and he'll charge up his limit break gauge to an LB2. He'll then cast Sword of Light. Three light swords will appear on the edges of the stage and will start to draw lines, kind of like magic markers drawing lines on paper. When these lines are finished drawing, the AoEs will go off inside the completed pattern. One edge of the stage will not be drawn on by the swords. This is the safe edge at the cardinal position. What helps me out is to pay attention to only the edges of the stage. See the one edge that the swords are not drawing on and then head to that edge. Once the pattern completes, Absolute Holy will go off, so your party will need to stack together to soak the damage. Next up, he'll cast Limit Break for Limit Break 2, and you'll want to get into your left or right groups on either side of the boss to resolve this mechanic. He'll then give himself an LB1 and charge up his sword with Holy. This Holy Charge will be a stack mechanic followed by either Fire or an Ice Charge. For our group, we just decided to stack relatively south, and in our run here, since we got ice, we need to keep moving our characters around so that we don't freeze in place. Don't forget about his sword mechanic as well here. If you see the circles on his sword, stack inside his hitbox, and if there are no circles, stack outside his hitbox but just south of the boss. He'll then cast Limit Break 1, which will shoot out three conal AoEs targeting a tank, a healer, and a DPS. The tank should be at north, the healers can be at east or west, and the DPS should be at south to take the conal damage. This prevents anyone from getting clipped with more than two AoEs, just like in Tsukuyomi Extreme. Next up is the Bitter End, which is a tank buster, so use cooldowns and have the off tank just provoke accordingly. After that, AoEs will appear on everyone. One person will get an eye above their head, and Bahamut will appear at the north on either the east or the west side of the stage. Bahamut will soon do a dash, so dodge the AoEs by going to the opposite side, and then have the person with the eye be the furthest person away from the boss. This way, nobody will have to worry about getting hit with the eye, and you can still DPS the boss. Even if you do get hit with the eye, you'll only get a damage down debuff, so it's 
almost no big deal for clears, but it can be important for other runs. Prepare for some raid-wide damage coming from Eld Dragon Dive, and get ready for the ad phase. Two Spectral tanks will appear, and they must be tanked apart, so use your left and right groups for each ad. Each DPS will then get a flare on them, so take these to your respective corners. At the same time, a stack AoE appears on each healer, so tanks will want to stack with their healer partner. After the flares go off on the DPS, two towers will spawn in the middle. It takes two people to resolve each tower, so we have the DPS pair on the east side, run back in and take the east tower, while the west side DPS take the west tower. At the same time, four Bahamut adds will spawn in the corners, and they'll tether to random folks. We have our tanks and healers pick up their tether and point it towards the outside of the stage. The Bahamuts will flare breath in the direction of the tether. Finish off the two spectral tank adds and get ready to tank limit break. You want to tank limit break three once the boss does his first slash animation here. After that, welcome to the last phase. Because of the way this fight was designed, let's go over each spectral ad set and then later we'll continue with the rest of the fight and go over the order of mechanics. Each of these ads have their own set of mechanics. The spectral ads he'll summon during the rest of the fight will be random, but their mechanic sets will always be the same. Also, each ad set will appear only once during the fight. For the summoner spectral ad, the four Bahamuts will appear in the corner like we saw in the ad phase. Four tethers will go out on random people, and four markers will appear on either the DPS or the tanks and the healers. The person who does not have a marker needs to pick up the tether from their Bahamut and face that flare breath towards the outside of the stage. The person with a marker on their head should rotate clockwise to the cardinal spot and take a conal AoE from the boss. Also during this time, ground AoEs appear on everyone, so you want to make sure that you're not covering the spot that you want to stand in to resolve your tether or marker mechanics. Right after the first flare breath and cone AoEs go off, it's a switch. The people who got the markers on their heads will now pick up the tethers, while the folks who just had their tethers will get markers on their head and will need to rotate to the cardinal spots for safety. For the Dark Knight and Bard spectral ads, the four DPS will get AoEs on them, place these in your corners, come back to the middle, three random people will get flares on them while one person gets a stack marker. The people with the flares will spread out into the cardinal directions in between the growing orbs, while the rest of the party will stack in the middle to absorb the AoE stack. Get ready for the limit break right after. For the White Mage and Black Mage Spectral adds, a total of 8 towers will spawn one after the other, each requiring 2 people to be in each tower. For simplicity's sake, the tanks take towers 1 and 5, the healers take 2 and 6, melees take 3 and 7, and the range will take 4 and 8, if your party has the standard composition. The first 4 towers will always spawn on the cardinal spots. The last 4 towers will always spawn on the intercardinals. Something that helps me, let's say that I'm in the first tower when it spawns, in the cardinal positions. That means that I'm going to be in the first tower that spawns on the intercardinal position. Likewise, if I'm standing in the second tower on the cardinals, then I'm going to stand in the second tower on the intercardinals. Same with 3 and 3 and 4 and 4. It's just a different method of counting the towers, but it works for me. For the Ninja Spectral ad, he'll summon a Leviathan Water Sprout at either the east or the west side of the stage. AoEs will appear on everyone, so you'll want to pop your anti-knockback right as you're dodging those AoEs. If you don't have your anti-knockback, just talk with your group about where you'll stack when you get knocked back. Each two-man group will get a stack AoE on them, so just share that with your partner. Now that we know what happens with each Spectral ad, let's go back to the start of the last phase and play back through the order of the mechanics. First up, he'll cast Imbued Saber, so pay attention to the element that he puts on his sword. Then he'll cast Spectral of Light, which summons our first Spectral Ad. Solve that ad's mechanics, and get ready to solve Imbued Coruscants based on the element he applied to his sword earlier. Also watch his sword in case you need to dodge inside or outside. He'll then do an Eld Dragon Dive, so heal up the party accordingly. Then he'll cast The Bitter End, which is the standard tank buster. Following that, he'll cast Quintuple Cast. This is a memorization game where he'll put 5 debuffs on the party and and then you'll just have to repeat the order once the cast bar finishes. Those five debuffs are Ice, where you have to move your character around, Fire is Stand Still and Don't Use Any Abilities, Holy is an AoE stack, Earth and Earth Shakers is Stand in Your Clock Position, and one person will get the eye on their head, so you just have to look away from them. The order in which these debuffs appear is random, so you'll just have to pay attention to the order in which they came out. Right after that, there will be another Sword of Light, followed by an Eld Dragon Dive. All that's left after that is three more Spectral Add Summons, followed by his Enrage Ultimate Crossover. And that's it! You've seen all the mechanics in the fight, 
fight, so just solve them when they come up. And I really like this fight, and how it's conditional and reactive based based on the limit break gauges, the spectral adds that he spawns, and the debuffs that appear on your head, or his sword. And if you made it this far, you have a pretty good idea on what to do when you see all of those mechanics come up. It might seem like a lot at first, and for me, it was tricky to wrap my head around all the debuffs that came up at different times. But the more and more I saw those mechanics, the easier it was to know what to do when they came up. And I'm sure after you've watched this guide and gotten your first clear, those mechanics will become easy peasy. If you think this guide has helped you out, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. However you want to support it is cool with me. I mean, it takes less than a GCD to click those buttons, right? So together, let's help the community get their clears. Until next time, keep on adventuring. Oh fuck, I haven't even put my star down. It's not good. It's out, out, uh, out, yeah. Ah! It's Jesus. okay. Wow, it did no <laughs> damage. <laughs> biggest scream for five damage. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a baby. You, you felt it though, you felt it. You sounded like the Willem scream. <laughs> so oh, he did! <laughs> <laughs> so the next one's gonna be the meteor yeah. thing, so get to your cardinal spots. Go to the edge. Like okay, cardinal! Like cardinal. <laughs> Okay, like kind of killed you guys. Hate you. Uh, he said corners and then sides and then oh man. No, we nobody said corners. I'll be two teams. Left right Oh, we've missed a heal, so. I got this, guys. Protect me, Meta. Oh, no. oh, oh. Yeah. get fucked! Get fucked, my team. <laughs> it's two, two side, I think. Yeah. I am dead. I dead. This one's a lot more complicated now. Okay. Triangle and dress. Oh. Oh. I think it's three? I think it's... Uh, oh no, it's, I'm wrong. It's, yeah, it's the other side. It's that thing. Well, who's oh. laughing now? <laughs> no. oh, wait, that's the group stack, right? Oh, 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 we had to keep moving! I forgot to look. That was my fault. <laughs> No, it's okay. Hey, Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. Oh, God. I'm just myself alive. I'm sorry, guys. Take one for the team. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, just kill it. Just kill it. Just kill it. <laughs> love wasted LPs. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Usada.